Hi everyone, it's Kim from Fleece and Harmony and this is episode 116 of our Knitting and Crochet podcast. If you're watching this on the day that it's been published, it's March 3rd, 2023. As usual, we will do a farm update. Uh, we have our section with uh, Betsy and I talking about a ton of projects, finished objects and works in progress that are happening. We're going to introduce a new segment during that section with Betsy as well. And we'll have a, a shop update and Rowan Spring has arrived. So we're going to go through that um, in, the, in the shop update and a few other things that we will uh, be talking about that we have. We're not going to do a list of five today because we have quite a lot of um, things to talk about uh, um, during the, the other segments. And I am going to do quite a comprehensive Fiber Festival update for the Fiber Festival that's here, happening here in Prince Edward Island uh, in October 2023. In the Harmony part, we're going to visit some winter fields and uh, it's really about the music. It's just kind of calm over wintry fields. To, so nothing too exciting going on in the Harmony part, but it's just going to be uh, just a moment of relaxation with some uh, calming and great music. So we'll get started with the farm update. I should mention as well, if you're new here, there is uh, chapters in the show notes. I do show notes for every episode. Um, anything that uh, we talk about is usually mentioned in the show notes. There's links to the products that we talk about and um, you can skip uh, during the, this uh, podcast to different sections if I'm talking about something that you're not interested in or if there's something you just want to get to right away, you can uh, check uh, in the show notes where the different seg segments are as well. But we always start with a farm update. And this time on the farm, we had more frozen pipes. So we're in a little bit of a deep freeze right now. And uh, this time of year, the average temperature is like around minus one or minus two or three. Um, nighttime might be a little bit lower than that, but we've had three or four days now of minus uh, teens, so minus 12, 13, minus 16. Luckily, it's not that windy because we usually have a lot of wind as well. But uh, the pipes in the house have not frozen, but one of our frost-free hydrants in the barn froze. So the, the hydrant in the sheep barn actually froze. We could try to force it up, but we're afraid that we would break it. And the way that a frost-free uh, hydrant works is that the, the opening to the water is actually underground below where the frost uh, would touch. Um, but if you don't run the, the way that it works is that you, you lift up the hydrant, the water comes out and then you put the hydrant down and the, the, you can hear the hydrant sucking back all the water. Sometimes if you don't run enough water, I don't know if it builds up pressure in there or why, how it works exactly, but if you don't run enough water, you can get some residual water freezing in the pipe. And uh, we do fill a little bucket where we take it over to where the rabbits live. And uh, I think that maybe we f didn't let it run long enough and we shut the, the um, hydrant off and then the temperature dropped and it's been, like I said, a deep freeze for the last three or four days and it froze. I had my hair dryer out in the barn with me two days ago to try to warm it up. So I was blowing and blowing and it got to the point where all of the pipe that's above ground that I could feel was warm to the touch and it still didn't melt. So it's actually probably frozen just right below the surface of the, of the floor of the barn. So we're just going to have to wait until it warms up before we can use that hydrant. So what that means is that we have another frost free hydrant in another barn, but we have to haul our water by hand for the sheep to um to do that so i was moving five buckets of water big buckets of water today to fill up the the sheep's trough and uh they spill it spilled all over my pants on my coveralls and it froze like within minutes so it's really they were then i was stiff i could all, almost hardly hardly walk uh, so I think we might uh, we might start doing we fill quite a large um, bucket or uh, like a I don't know what it is a 
hundred gallon or something like that barrel for the horses when we take their water over to them. So I may have to, uh, we may have to do that and just drive it over to the other barn because it was pretty, pretty, uh, uh, heavy moving the, that water around from between burns and uh, I don't want to injure my shoulders because then I won't be able to knit <laughs> so that's I have to take care of that of that so I was commiserating about that a little bit and how come it's cold it's by the time you're watching this on March 3rd it's actually going to warm up and I think we actually have a couple days gonna just be right at zero so um, I was you know complaining about the cold a little bit but I had to clean out my phone because my storage on my phone was starting to get full. So my phone was telling me that I needed to create more storage space. So I first, the first thing that I did is I went to some videos and I thought, well, I'll start deleting some videos and that will free up space. And I found videos from 2015 and they were dated from March 15th and 16th. So if, um, People might remember, um, certainly the local people will remember, that 2015 was a pretty famous winter around here because uh, of the amount of snow that we had. There was no snow at all until sometime in February. So it started snowing in February and it literally didn't stop snowing until May. It was unbelievable. And these little short clips that I'm going to show you were from one was from March 15th and the other one was from March uh, 16th. And you're it's it's almost it was even shocking to me and I lived through it. But this is exactly what we were we were dealing with in March of that year. So let's take a quick look at that. So things can always be worse. So we, we definitely don't have that. We can still see the grass on the ground. It's just cold. So we're, uh, we don't have any snow. And I don't think uh, we had to buy a new snow blower this year and Ken hasn't had it out of the garage. So we can't complain about the snow, but it's definitely been cold. <laughs> So everything else is good on the on the farm. Uh, the one good thing though about the cold weather that we've been having is that we've had bright crisp winter days. So that's been really, uh, it's not gloomy, it's really been bright and sunny. So that's that's somehow better than than those rainy days that we were having and with gray, uh, gray weather and everything. So that's all that's all good. The renovations are going well. We have uh, mostly four rooms with uh, the drip rock with all of the seams filled and everything so that's moving pretty quickly and they've started tiling in the bathroom so again I'm not going to show any pictures until we have I can go through a series of pictures and show you the progress um, and it's, it is kind of going pretty pretty slow because there's one um, carpenter that's doing actually most of the work so it's, it does take some time it's a pretty big project and uh, at some point I will show a, a complete slideshow on on that and that's about it for the farm I think um, we're just uh, we're just um, thinking about when we we're going to shear so our shearer was in New Zealand actually for a number of weeks and she's just returned so we have to book uh, book shearing it usually takes part place in mid-March so that's really coming quickly and we haven't really been focused we haven't booked her yet so hopefully she's going to have a little bit of time to do our rather small flock 35 sheep is not a lot for her to do so I'm hoping that she's going to be able to, to do it in kind of short notice I must remember to call her tomorrow so I think we're going to go to uh, the section with Betsy and like I said we have a lot to talk about in that section so we're going to hop on over there right now and when we come back we'll do the shop update. Hi Betsy. Hi Kim. How are you today? Good. Good. It's March 3rd. What? Oh my well, goodness you're right. Yes it's good. The day you guys are seeing this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's confusing me big time. I was like what happened? Yeah yeah. March 3rd. So um we have kind of a big section okay. today. Yes, All we're right. going to, uh, we have finished objects galore. 
Oh, okay. Well, because now Simone's here, so yes. we get to show her projects too. And we have works in progress yep. galore. Yep. Sort of. <laughs> and we're going to start a new segment. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. And you're part of it. Oh, oh right. Yes. Yeah. Let's it's go. In the Mill. <gasps> so, and the genesis of In the Mill for uh, for our viewers, um, Jennifer Hicks has decided to take a little bit of time off. So yeah. she's uh, she's left the, the shop and uh, nothing bad. No. It was just, uh, just time for her to do a few different things. And um, she said something when she left that I'm hoping um, we're going to be able to see her work um, in the future. So oh, that's good. great. But nice. in the meantime, that meant that there was a vacancy in the dying, and <laughs> Betsy is the one that uh, I don't know if you got the long, the long straw or the short straw. Oh, but well, I'm know. enjoying it. So yeah. I'm calling. Which is the good way, though? Long. Okay. Short. Short is. Uh, oh, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. It's usually bad, but you, you, <laughs> it's good. So we're um, doing a few things different in the mill because Betsy's learning and then we're cha changing things up. So we're going to do a section about that Yay. and we're going to talk about those those things and we'll do a couple a couple of episodes with that so nice. you can tell us about what you're learning and yeah. what you're doing. It's been stuff. a bit of a steep learning curve. So Yeah. <laughs> a good one. A successful but yes. steep, steep yeah. one. But Well, all right. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but before we do any of that, we're going to um, talk about the projects. Mm -hmm. And I've mentioned this a couple times now that Simone uh, Van Eiderstein from Sand and Sky Creations has joined the team here at Fleece and Harmony. And lucky for me, because I've, I'm a notoriously slow knitter, and you've she... got a broken wing. Well, not a broken wing, but <laughs> Just a, a, yeah, yeah, it's getting there, favoring it's, your shoulder. Yeah. Simone is like a super fast knitter. Yes. 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 And very prolific. Very. And very good. Very good. Yeah, very good. Yes. So we're going to get to show some I'm of her projects. I'm just a little bit intimidated. Yeah, I know. But I'm trying not to let it show. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, we're, uh, um, it's actually like pretty good. We can all three are, yeah. not that we're, uh, I was going to say learning from each other, not that. But just sharing ideas. Sharing ideas and, and yeah, things. Yeah, exactly. So, but we're going to start with something really fun. Okay. So the first finished object that I want to show is the frog. <laughs> he has all his bits. So he's, he's got, every, he's finished. So this is little, I think I just decided his name is Slimy, no, now I don't even remember. Simeon, I think yes. I called him. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not slimy at all. No. He's actually, he's Fuzzy. made from, yeah, from Rowan Felted Tweed. Mm -hmm. um, the pattern is uh, Claire Garland, I believe is her name, from Dot Petals. Oh, is that uh, what her name is? I think oh, so. okay. I just yeah. named Dot Pebbles. Okay. Yeah. Which, yeah, she's known very much for that. Right. Um, when the original pattern calls for it to use um, a kid's silk haze with it, so that okay. it gets like a bit of she a fuzzy. She often fuzzier, has yeah. like a little fuzzy thing. It gives them just a, a real squish, soft, cuddly. Yeah. But I chose to just use my leftover Rowan Tweed because mm -hmm. I wanted it to go with my wallflower. Right. So. So this... We're going to show your wallflower sure. again, yeah. just again. to remind people. Okay. So, I didn't bring mine because <laughs> I was doing my things for my Scandi work knit along. So okay. if you so. recall or don't recall, either way, um, I kind of went for the, is it Monet's mm -hmm. lily pads was sort of what I was looking for in my wallflower. I won't quite get all of it up, but it's no. the center part that matters anyway. Yeah. So you can see those green flowers with the pink on them mm -hmm. i kind of went for a lily pad idea so i'll try and sort of build it here <gasps> so he can sit right in the lily pad yeah so he when sits it's on, on his a, own yeah. Yeah. so when it's on a bed like a bedspread then he can sit right up top. right it's perfect so cute and rather addicting so there might already be a few more bodies on the needles at oh home. <laughs> okay okay so yeah. when we last saw him, you were debating whether to take out some of the padding or the stuffing. Fluff, but yeah. did you do that? I did not. No, because he still looks like he's not. Nice I was and... going to leave the arms and legs floppy and not put yeah. wire in it. But it's so fun to yes. shape him. So all yeah. I did was, I mean, you can use any kind of fine bendable wire. But I just took, uh, or zip ties, is that what they're called? Yeah. yeah. And trimmed the plastic down the sides and then fed them through with a needle. And he works great. Zip ties. No, no. not zip tie. Uh, twist, twist ties. ties. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. The word I'm and they for. have got the perfect kind of resistance, I yes. think. Just like they're enough. just just enough. Yeah. yeah. So he's fantastic. So he's fine. So and he so, has siblings coming. And are they going to 
he's going to be attached attached to the blanket or you're just well not right away okay. someday when i actually have a guest room when my children maybe grow up and move out then in theory it could be on a bed spread out and then it would sit nice but yeah. for now i'll just kind of have him decorate okay house. or maybe like okay. i don't know He'll show up in different places in the mill to surprise people. Or oh, something. okay. <laughs> like she, Sheldon has a friend. Sheldon, Sheldon has she, a, There we go. Mm-hmm. Sheldon has a friend. So yeah. what we'll make sure, because almost every episode, somebody asks me about Sheldon. Oh, so okay. Sheldon is somewhere behind us. Ken always hides Sheldon somewhere. So I don't see until we edit the podcast where he is. So Sheldon the Sheep is a pattern from um, Curly Girl Co-op. And I always have the link down in the bottom of the show notes. So if you want to find that, it's a free download, the pattern. And uh, I guess we'll add Simeon's frog. pattern. Yeah. The frog. Oh, sure. Yes, we could do that. Yeah. yeah. So if people want to make uh, dot pop, if you do any kind of amigurumi, uh, yeah. Dot Pebbles is on your radar, I'm and sure. They're her, always just so beautiful. Her instructions are fantastic. You oh, good. do do, okay. there is like short rows and wraps and turns. And the new one for me was pearl front and back. Yes. Um, which was tricky. So there's actually, you can learn a lot of skills in a really short yes. amount of time project, which yes. is another just sort of, if you're looking to build your technique, why mm-hmm. I love these. Because right. you do it so many times, but it's in a short amount and right. a finished product that you and, actually remember. Yeah, low risk, yes. a low risk yeah. situation. <laughs> so very similar to Julie from um, Little Cotton, Cotton rabbits. rabbits. That's what yeah. I found about the rabbits too, mm-hmm. is that you learned really good techniques for shaping sweaters and yeah. everything in a small, amount. low risk yeah. project. So uh, that's really, that's, and maybe for knitters that aren't really interested in doing amigurumi as a whole thing, yeah. That's a good, really good um, way to learn things. If yes. you just look at it that, yeah. even if you do like a one-off for a couple I'm of... To, like I'm thinking of all of the skills in here. There's wrap and turn short rows. There's the pearl front and back, knit mm-hmm. front and back. His legs are a version of an I cord. Right. So you cover all... Oh, you're picking up and yeah. knitting to add like... and But all of it just really small, but so many skills in yes. one little project. Right. So, yeah. And I think the real assumption that is not correct that people make, which I made myself, is that when you see this little tiny project, you think it's really fiddly knitting, but it's not. It's not bad. It's Mm -hmm. I think my rabbits were done on a 3.25 needle. Yeah, I'm doing on, well, this one I'm doing on a smaller, but uh, it's two two millimeter, I think. But it's just, I'm just using two uh, double pointed needles and working on that. Right. Yeah, Yeah, it's not, it's not... um, it's not like, I can tell you what's more fiddly is trying to get my bottom up sleeve done on my Maya sweater, which I'm going to talk about later okay. because I'm used to doing flat sleeves okay. two at a time. Anyway, I'm having a little, I started having a moment. I'm having a moment. I had a moment last night, a kind of a big moment. Oh. Anyway, anyway, not oh. nothing to do with the pattern, just the fact that it's, in the round and mm-hmm. I like to knit flat yeah. so I'm just anyway it's okay nice. should I talk about my other crochet before we move into knitting sure okay why don't we do that sure so it is it won't look like it but it is actually a complete whip and rip or rip and whip and yes um, so, so I had to I'm yeah. just gonna say one sure. thing is so now we had it divided as whips and FOs but oh, we're just going we're like we're just, got, we're just gonna jump so Sorry. just bear with us we'll we'll that's okay <laughs> makes it has to go with the flow, whatever yeah. makes sense. Okay. So you'll recall, I basically had this shape yeah. last week, um, but this actually has completely started over. So what happened, I was not doing the proper amount of increases on, I believe it was this end when okay. I got there. So I was actually, this part here was starting to do this okay. instead of going this way. And when it's a shawl, you want it to wrap around your shoulders. So right. you want it to naturally hug you. Right. And it was just kind of lumpy and bumpy. It was just wrong. Mm-hmm. So I had to go back and it truly was just a pattern reading error. Mm-hmm. I was just being sloppy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to do that. So this have... first section is done now. This is, by so the did way. Did you take the whole thing out? Well, I haven't yet, but it's oh, just okay. all, I just started over I again. Knew, oh, okay. Yeah. So I just want to say yeah. that 
you, I hadn't seen the pattern before in the last episode. You didn't remember what the name is, no. so you had to send me a picture, yeah. and then I put a title in and whatever, so everybody knew what you're talking about. And when I looked at that picture, I went, "Oh my goodness! Like it was, it's so beautiful, this shawl." Well, now I have to pull it off, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> So we, I did, um, we, we couldn't remember what the name of it was. Right, this it week. is the, um, we have it written down here. I'm yep. just searching for it. Karina it is, Mosaic yes. shawl. Yes, Karina Mosaic. And we're not going to say the designer no. because there, it's absolutely 110% guaranteed we'll that we wrong. will not pronounce her name yeah. properly. And so you see it underneath us right yes. now. Yes, and she's on Ravelry and has lots of other beautiful designs as well. So yeah. basically what's about to happen, this is the initial... Um, part of the shawl and then I'm just about to go into the first section of mosaic mm -hmm. um, and I was going to use leftover uh, cotton candy from right. my blue but when I put it together it w or sorry from my shawl that I called cake when I put it together it just it wasn't right mm -hmm. when you see hers it's it's quite a large contrast it has like a goldy yellow mm -hmm. color to it with a I've darker a picture purple. by yeah. now so um, so, so this is grape soda in Point Prim Sock yarn, yes. right? Okay. So now I'm, or uh, might be flock fingering actually, oh, but it's okay. really similar to yeah. the weight of okay. sock. So that's what I'm going to use because right. we don't generally have the flock fingering on hand. Right. Um, so I went to the sock counter and pulled out a couple different things. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of in the line of the original one, but her yeah. yellow is maybe a little more golden, yeah. a little less brown. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've been debating, I could do that. I really like this, and mm -hmm. I think that would be enough contrast. It's just two colors, right? Yes, just two colors. Okay. It's a little bit deceiving in the picture because of the mosaic part. The it mosaic, blends the... and I think the purple yarn she uses, I think it does actually have, it moves into a darker, oh, what do you call okay. that, a gradient? Gradient, okay. Um, so I might play around a bit with that okay. too and see, or I could put it with seagull, but mm -hmm. I think... I think you I want think higher I'm going contrast. with this. Yeah. yeah. Or it just, I don't know, I haven't decided yet. Or if I'm feeling, I'm, I'm a little unsure about this combination, but there's something about it that I also really like. So it's closer to what she's done. It is. Too. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll have to see. Next time you'll find out which one I actually okay. decided to Stay go with. Stay tuned. Yeah. It's just like an episode of some kind of <laughs> series that. <laughs> Hopefully there's Come not a hiatus in the middle like certain ones Hopefully that I'm not. watching right now. <laughs> so that's the Karina okay. Mosaic. And last time uh, you were talking, because we should say, talk about your shoulder, so you, yeah. your shoulder is getting better. It's getting better, but, but I'm taking it easy still. Taking, yeah. So I'm trying to be careful as soon as I feel a twinge to just stop. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's actually why I haven't worked much on my knitting, right? Um, which we can talk about a little bit later when yeah. we get to it. Okay. Yeah. So... Um, so we'll go back and just keep talking about the um, finished objects. And unfortunately, I put the finished next finished object that underneath. I wanted to do underneath my... Um, so this is a, a contribution from Simone. And she just washed and blocked it and it smells wonderful. <laughs> Which one did you okay. use? Can you tell? Um, I don't know. I think oh. uh, it might be something, yeah. something different than eucalyptus because we always use eucalyptus yeah. jasmine. Doesn't Maybe. quite. I don't know. Doesn't She'll swim. tell us tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So um, many of you will recognize this pattern right away because it's love notes, and I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of love notes have been uh, knit, but this is absolutely stunning. Mm -hmm. And she has knit it in. Um, the Point Prim Sock Yarn in Chestnut, and she's held uh, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in Soil. That's the color. That's like... 733, three, I think, is the number. Made to go together. Yes, and but it's interesting because Chestnut is a brown, but it has just the littlest pinkish, pinkish tinge to it, yeah. and this is actually quite golden brown, mm -hmm. and when they go together, it's just magical. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's gorgeous. So... It almost looks like there's actual hits of gold filament in here. I know. Which there's not. There's no, no shiny to it. It's but it beautiful. Just, yeah. It's absolutely stunning, and it feels fantastic. It really does. So, I'm going to give you... Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about some of the adaptations that she did on this because it's not um, exactly uh, to the pattern. So what Simone did was she, you might notice that there's a little bit of a, the short 
a shorter front and a longer back. So the pattern has that a little bit. They, they lengthen the back hem slightly with short rows. So Simone followed the pattern, but she just increased the number of times she repeated the short rows. So she got a little bit more of a dip in the, in the back. So that's the first thing that she did. She also changed the length of the sleeves. So she made them a little bit longer. So you've got longer sleeves on this one. And she knit it, um, she knit it on smaller needles. So instead of the recommended needles, which I think, I, I think is it six, six, mi six millimeter, millimeter yeah. that would have made a much looser fabric. Much, yeah. And she actually did them on a 4.5 millimeter yeah. needle. So that brought up a whole discussion. We were, the three of us were discussing, discussing it today in the shop because we're all like ooing and aahing over this and talking about gauge. Yes. So <laughs> Simone, I don't know how many projects she's knitted, but thousands of projects. A lot. Yes, yeah. a lot. And she, I asked her, I said, tell us the truth. Do you always do a gauge swatch? And what did she say? She said yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but she said yes. I don't know why I want to fight it so bad. Cause yeah. It, it tells you so much. I know. Um, and then what I said to you is every time that I've been a good girl and I've done one, mm -hmm. I change something. Yes. Because it tells me something about the fabric or about the color combination I've chosen, right. and I changed something. So yeah. I should just accept it and I think so. embrace it. Yeah, and if you're a process knitter, yeah. which you are. I am, so, so I don't know I why I fight yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Um, so Simone wanted something that wasn't as loose, like in yeah. the, like as much open space. So she, she knitted on the 4.5, didn't mean that she had to do like lengthen it and she had to she used more yarn than the pattern normally calls for oh, okay. because this is one of these patterns like the ranunculus that you can do like with a minimal amount of yarn okay. but um, she did use a bit more but I mean I think the result is totally worth it well and that would be if you're doing it on a six millimeter that would be because you have such a loose gauge yes. I would think I mean, lots of why, air yeah it likes lots of space I'm curious do you know Kim the sleeves kind of have a bit of this bell effect yep. is that part of the original I you think know so she, okay. I think it's so cute. Because I don't think I she like actually that. changed uh, shaping, too though. much. The, so she would the, she didn't change the shaping that I'm okay. aware of. But you probably just have faster increases. Right. And okay. uh, you can see the, the sleeve is quite, uh, like or actually you might decrease um, going up because it looks like the upper arm is a little bit. From down. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, it's kind of like the no, Anne and Green Gables, little puff cute. sleeve but it's at the bottom is a bell, like you said, it's beautiful. Maybe it depends on how it was how she blocked it. But if you look at that, it looks like she increased and then De rapid decreased. Yeah, that's maybe. Cool. Yeah, it's really, really nice. I, I think this is one of the nicest projects I've seen. She has this cute little, oh, there's this cute little tag in here. So yeah. it says, handmade, see, I'm not just hoarding. Yeah. <laughs> that's cute. It's really cute. Great. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So it, it feels amazing. Yes. And I'm not really like I, I haven't done a ranunculus and I was, I like the look of this very much. Um, but I wasn't really like not really itching to do a love notes, but I think uh, by tin can knits, by the way. Okay. So, you know, the pattern is like fantastic. So again, so, is the Kids Silk okay's edition, that's her own thing? Uh, I think, uh, no, I think it that had a, okay. I think you did do stranding, but I, I couldn't say for sure. Okay. And, Check um, yeah, but I'm almost, I'm tempted <laughs> to, to do it. And a part of it is because, you know, bottom or top down yoke sweater, <laughs> which I, I'm wearing one right now, which yeah. I love, which is my, yeah. my hinterland by Jennifer Steingast. I fight the, the gauge swatch. Kim fights the top down top down yoke top down yes. yoke okay so the reason i asked simone i said tell me the truth are the armpits where they should be or is it a little bit back wingish and she said no actually they're they're where okay. they should be and that's because well where they should be where oh, where cool. i like them to be and it's yeah. because the yoke is not that deep so look at oh, the difference okay. like how far the this yoke goes down right further than this yoke so the okay. yoke is a bit more shallow so that means that the designer can then um, uh, cut or not cut off, what to separate for the sleeves earlier. 
Okay. Am I Which seeing like the Ragland yes. style? Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's how they, that's, that's how they how do they them. Do yeah. It nicer. So okay. it's, um, so you have a shallower yoke. So that helps with that bat wingy thing. And the other thing she said was because her gauge is smaller, um, that would affect her row gauge. So she actually, it, would ha it is, comes up under the arm a little bit more. We're going to talk about that more about the ar underarm thing in my Maya because this is uh, the, it's a, an ongoing theme for today. So this is the love note again in point prim uh, sock yarn in chestnut with held with kid silk case. Yeah, yeah, and soil soil seven three three. Yeah, nice, beautiful. But that's not all. Okay, so keeps going. I think Simone's on a theme with the chestnut. So she's used chestnut sock yarn. I don't know if uh, this is the leftovers from the chestnut sock yarn that she brought, but I do know that she um, used chestnut sock yarn in these, Again, these yeah. mittens. I would love to put them on, but my size hands compared I, to Simone's I, are... I think the, the thumbnail, I have them on. Oh, nice. Okay. okay. Hope you don't mind, <laughs> Simone. So this is called Varia, and it is Erica Hauser. Is that how you would pronounce that? Erica Hauser? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It looks... I think we'll just go with that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Her Erica Hauser Designs. And uh, I hope you can see that it's a beautiful owl. Oh, gorgeous. And she was telling me all about what kind of owl it is. Oh, and we, okay. Um, oh, I wish I could remember. Uh, anyway, she we have them here on the island. And sweat? she has a photo. Is it sweat? Uh, something about like a striped or a, it's not striped. It has to do with, though, like, as soon as she said it, I thought about the fact that it has these vertical lines on its body. But yeah. my brain links things sometimes that's not... I, not it always... looks like a, there's a little tiny owl on that we have okay. here called a sweat. Sweat, oh, I think. I don't think it's that one. Because no? when she showed me the picture, it looked larger. Oh, okay. But anyway, she okay. actually has a photo that she was out walk. She walks bright early in the morning. Yeah. Um, and her headlamp, she turned and caught it right in her headlamp and was oh. able to take a photo of it. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, we'll ask her and I'll put a title. Sounds good. So these mittens are knit from, uh, so you can see the chestnut yep. there. So sock chestnut. And what's interesting about these is Simone is not afraid to put different weights of yarn together in the same project either with like within reason. Yes. So she had obviously sock yarn left and that's the chestnut. Then she had, um, is it sweet? Slate, yes, but is it Selkirk worsted or no? It's sock, sock, sock yarn yeah. again in uh, slate at the top, and then at the bottom the light gray is actually the wild winds that she had left over from the Iditarod mittens. Yeah. So the sock obviously is all the same weight, but the gray from uh, the wild winds is slightly. Um, it's close to the same weight, but it's a different yarn. Yeah, different texture to it. And a different texture. But it works just. Fine. Yeah, absolutely. So she said that that she does swatches for that reason as well oh, to see how the is. yarns play together of course and she said as long as it you kind of have uh oh yeah i didn't show the outside the inside yeah. too yeah detail on those yeah still they're just delightful i love our sock yarn it has a real smoothness mm -hmm. to it it's mm -hmm. just yep and <laughs> this is where this it. is usually when i say i can't believe we make that here <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, and the, yeah the wild ones in there too like you yeah you wouldn't even hardly notice that's a, a different, a different yarn. yarn. Yeah. That's so amazing. look at this. And I just got this beautiful note from one of our customers that received her wild winds. And um, she was telling me how much she enjoyed knitting with it because she said it's actually like blooming in her hands while she's knitting and she's loving it. So uh, I think we might explore a little bit more Ooh, with wild winds we can do with up. it. Maybe nice. that'll be an in the mill. Fun. Update sometimes. So anyway, Varia Mitts by Erica Hauser Designs. And they are knit on a 2.25 millimeter. Um, she did them on circular, short circulars. Oh, okay. But uh, that's uh, it's beautiful. It's just gorgeous. Yeah. They're, She's just got such a beautiful gauge yeah. and neat knitting. She's a left-handed okay. knitter too. Oh, I know, which I'm yeah. left-handed, but it never occurred to me to try to learn how to knit left-handed. Yeah, I just she, watched videos that were right-handed. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So she... Uh, um, Although you say that like, oh my gosh, how could she do that as a left-handed No, knitter? no, no. That's not how I was saying it. I was saying because some left-handed knitters are kind of 
I don't know because Kim's going to get herself in trouble. No, <laughs> no, no, no. People, people try to tell left-hand knitters that they should just learn to do right, oh, right-handed okay. knitting, which oh. is what I told my own husband when he learned how to knit. Just learn it. But you know, the left-handed knitting yeah. is a thing. Oh yeah, so, totally. By the way, I'm the only right-handed person that works yep. in the shop. We lefties rule. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm uh, outnumbered three to one. Oh, Janet's right-handed, I think. Oh, yeah. So oh, she, right. wor- she works two that's days, right. so I'm yeah. on my own with the lefties. Well, for you the were, rest. Jennifer Hicks was left-handed as well, or is yes. left-handed, I should say. Yes. Was, is left-handed as well. Yes. So, so we're we're really, really outnumbered, at, yeah. outnumbered at one point. Yeah, right. Okay, so those are the, the finished objects. Yes. So now we can talk more about the w- works in progress. Okay. So d- would you like to show your uh, oh, Cordelia? Not, yeah, sure. I haven't done much more on it, but just to kind of keep people posted. Um, and I think I've discovered what some of the, the problem was. So part of it is I was sitting in a poor chair for knitting. So you need to have good ergonomics when you're, you're What you're talking about is My your shoulder. shoulder yeah. being sore and not mm-hmm. being able to knit. So that I think was part of the problem, a poor choice in the chair I was sitting at. The, the arms on the chair were actually, mm-hmm. I was resting on them and it was pushing my shoulders mm-hmm. up as well as being a bit of a tense knitter and my house was a bit cool. So I think I was just like, anyway, it was yeah. a, a series of poor choices. And then what I found is, um, I think I'm on too short of a cable. Mm-hmm. So I'm having to really push to move my stitches all the time. So I'm going to, Kim reminded me, which I can't believe I forgot. I'm just going to use my extender um, piece on my Chiagu cord and just add the shortest one yeah. to give myself a few more inches and mm-hmm. it'll just spread yeah. everything out a bit. So you have the Chiago set. I do. And yeah. in the set, in case other people have forgotten, yeah. you do have little connectors yes. that are part of the set. If you still have them and haven't dropped them in your couch. Oh. I protect mine. Okay. Those are, those are like gold. <laughs> those are like gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, you do have that. So you yeah. can, that's what makes it, help, makes it even more versatile is that you can add to it. Yeah, yeah. you can get three cords with them. So it's but. the Lady Cordelia by Kristen Drysdale yep. for our Kristen Drysdale Knit Along. Right. Um, I have not made much progress at all since I last showed you, but... I'm going to keep going bit by bit, but also pay attention to my right. elbows and shoulders. So you do have the two sleeves done. The sleeves are done, yeah. 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 So you did the sleeves first. I did. Yes, and yeah. you used one of them for your swatch. I did. Yeah, right. That's how so, I did. So I actually made three sleeves. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So this is beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's in the it's round. Really nice. There's a yeah. steak down the center, which she has you basically draw or create a full-on runway when mm-hmm. you need to cut it. So mm-hmm. I anticipate that... The process will be straightforward and, and good to go. Yeah. Um, actually, also, too, what I should mention, um, I had found when I first started, I found a few errors in the pattern, and I emailed her, um, and she responded, like, beautifully grateful mm-hmm. that I had let her know that this was there, and it's all been fixed, and she has a different, a new version of the pattern out. So mm-hmm. if you got one and have an old version, make sure you check back in to get the updated Ravelry version. Ravelry usually sends you the new one Perfect. anyway, but you nice. should double check. Yeah. And just by the way, we have to mention again that... Um, <laughs> I think I think uh, when I got the email from her that she was going to design something for the Fiber Festival, she was on a teaching cruise in Iceland or something. Oh. So she was working on the pattern there, okay. and then she wanted she was determined that she was going to have it done for the Fiber Festival, which was literally a couple weeks away. Oh goodness! And she did this whole Instagram thing of it's... knitting that cardigan in a week. Oh. So the uh, we'll forgive her that there was yes. a few things, eh. yeah. but you know what? The sign of a great designer is not that they don't they never make mistakes is that they answer the email that's one thing i look for yeah Yeah. that's one of the big things i look for when i'm doing the list of five is that the design i go through the comments and if people have written and asked questions about their pattern and they don't have an answer they don't make it to the list of five because you i mean i understand that it's pretty hard and and things are busy but it is really challenging if you're a maker and you have this pattern and you you have a question and you just don't get an answer right it makes it hard to kind of press on through a project yeah exactly yeah so um Yes. So that's, uh, you know, we love Kristen Drysdale. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I will show now because it makes sense to show my Maya. So I really worked hard to make sure that I could talk about this next thing that I'm going to talk about. 
You set goals. I set goals. I took a page out of Betsy's book and said, I can't stop until I get to this point. I said, oh, <laughs> just don't you go injuring anything. No, 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 no. no. It's fine. In proper chair. It's all good. Yeah. Well, I, actually, sit, I have no I, idea what you I actually in sit in the middle of my sofa. Oh, that means then you have as much room as you need. Exactly. I so used that's to. Where, yeah. But then. I don't know why I stopped. So I actually have started the sleeves, but I'm going to talk about um, the way that this construction is. So once again... Should I hold those? Sure. Okay. So once again, um, one of them is attached to the sleeve, so okay. we'll just do this. Got so it. once again, this is my Maya uh, sweater. So it's a pullover for the Kristen Drysdale knit along that we're doing, which ends on April 30th. So you, you still have time to join. <laughs> She's got so many patterns. She's got yes. like 110 now on Ravelry and uh, big and small patterns. So you don't need to worry. So what we've done is uh, you start at the bottom, cast on its straight stocking net all the way up to the top. I, as you might remember, if you're watch, I was going to do some shaping, but I was too late when I decided yeah. to do that. Um, oh, up to show the bottom. Yeah, and we'll just go, go this like way. this. And it does have a split hem on the bottom, and you do have a little bit more length in the back than in the front. I added this color work here because I was all set to do straight stockinette and then thought, okay, well, maybe I can just add a little, a little bit of bling here. <laughs> so I just added it straight up straight to the top and then um, part of the reason why I wanted to knit this project is that I love these deep yokes and I love it when the design of the yoke goes under the arm yeah. don't love the bat wing <laughs> but you inevitably get so Kristen has come up with a really smart way so that you have a yoke a long yoke or like a long design color work yes that comes down over the sleeve and over the shoulder, but your your underarm is in the right spot. You can't actually see where you're pointing there, we're hiding yeah. it. Yeah, okay, so. your, and your underarm is up under your arm. Right. So the way you knit this is that you knit to a length which is an inch and a qu three quarters below your underarm, and remember it's bottom up. Then you um, you knit around and you, you bind off 10 stitches uh, for the, for the left underarm. Okay. So you see, I've done my done bind that. off. Yeah, I see it there. Then you stop knitting okay. and you leave this like this. So this is done now. Okay. That section yeah. part is done. Then you start your sleeve. Yes. So you do your left sleeve. So I've just started it. And all of this is because I forgot, she recommends double pointed needles. I don't like doing magic loop. I had my shorties, but I didn't have the right size. So now I've got, I said, oh, well, I haven't tried this before, but people always say use two sets of short um, interchangeables okay. and you can knit a sleeve. I have no idea if I'm doing it right. But I have no idea what you're doing. This mess is <laughs> using two sets of uh, interchangeable needles to knit in the small circumference. Okay. So I'm sure that this is not the right way to do it. But I've just cast on the bottom of the sleeve. Okay. And you do like 15 rows of rib, so I haven't even finished that yet. So we're just starting. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna knit up, and this is where, this is what I love about this, is because it took a little bit of planning to make sure that this would work. So what happens is that you, you do the color work on the body, and she made a very clear boundary of where you're gonna stop. So it's really easy in the pat to find in the pattern, because you're gonna try to match up the pattern with what's on the sleeve because you'll have that same pattern on the sleeve exactly oh, nice. so she stopped it at a place where there's a clear delineation which is a solid row of the contrast oh, color, color. Okay. so she's made it easy for you yeah so you know it's I like that when the designer is trying to help you out so <laughs> they'll be about this much or there will be on the this sleeve. much on the sleeve yep. as well and okay. then you're gonna join oh, on the nice. left okay in what the same so the same spot and then you oh. then you knit around and you come to the right and you're going to bind off 10 stitches okay. here then you're going to knit the right sleeve oh i get it so okay. there's all kinds of things i like about this first of all you don't have two sleeves to do all at once you're going to be able to to Variety. do a little a little bit i mean it's not 
much, but you're just doing doing that. And then after that, you're just doing the yolk and you're done. And you're good to go. Yeah. Nice. So I just love it. Okay. Yeah. I'm I'm excited to see the fit of how yes. this will fit at the end. Yes. And yeah. Yeah. Because if you like it, it opens up the doors to so many yoked style sweaters. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this is uh, hopefully it fits. <laughs> I changed the gauge of this too. I'm <laughs> knitting. I'm knitting the fifth size, okay, which is big, yeah, because my gauge is tighter because would, I like yeah. the denser fiber. And I, I did the gauge swatch. I washed and blocked it. I measured, and uh, I you think everything. Every, I should be fine. Yeah. I'm not sure. Have you ever actually knit something that doesn't fit you? Yes. Well, I had oh. to redo my paisley. Oh, okay. Yeah, because right. it was. Oh, that right, I wouldn't do go around. That story. It yeah. Was, yeah, that was. But that was like a front and back pattern gauge issue what are you what are you laughing it was partly at? because i didn't weigh the same oh. by the time it took me so long to do it which i still haven't finished it oh. like i bet but someday yeah someday. but now my weight went in the other direction so <laughs> i'll be fine oh Whoops. wouldn't it be something if it's too big <clears throat> now? nope all good yeah everything's in place if it's too big that would be really not funny <laughs> that would really be not be funny okay okay we'll put this on this side yeah we're getting quite a pile going here yeah okay all right so we're at that spot in the show where I start to sweat. Well, you're getting warm. Yeah, we're <laughs> starting to sparkle. Yeah, <laughs> starting to sparkle. Yeah. <laughs> All right, and there's one more thing, just really, really quick. Is the cowl cardigan is still on the go? I have two more repeats of the um, increases. Okay. So that means 20 rows. All oh, right. But I can do 10 rows in a session because I also set a benchmark for myself to get to the increase creases before yep. I let no them down. No quitting until you get there. No, so it's grown quite a bit, okay. but I just have two more, um, like it's about this much that, you added. that I have to do. Garter back and forth, increasing yeah. every yeah. 10 rows. There's nothing yeah. to see. Okay. It's completely <laughs> boring, but just to let you know, I'm still knitting. moving along with yeah. it. Gorgeous That's colors. Perfect. Okay. Your, your two projects you're working on remind me of, what is that? I don't even, I'm not even sure what they represent. Someone can tell us, but, um, the purple ladies or something there's a there's a whole line of um like decorative items they have out hats and shoes that are all purple and red oh anyway, really clarify for me what i'm talking about so that yeah. he doesn't think okay i'm way out in left field yeah. surely somebody knows put about it, it in the comments yes <laughs> yeah yeah put it in the comments okay so that's a lot of finished objects and a go. lot of whips on the go. Yeah. And so now we're going to talk about what's happening in the mill. Okay. So this is the in the mill section. Maybe I'll have to do a little graphic to, to, to introduce it. it. Yes. <laughs> so what's happening in the mill is that um, when Jennifer was planning on leaving, she had spent some time with Betsy. And was, oh, thankfully. Yeah, she, yes. Yes. <laughs> And was uh, showing her all of the all of the dye recipes and the different techniques and everything that we're using for dyeing. So for people that don't know, we ha obviously we have the, our woolen mill, and we have about a hundred different color, eighty three I think, yeah, or something I think like it's that. Eighty something. Eighty something different colorways that we do. Yeah. We have never retired a color colorway. We've done a few special colorways on special yarns, but yeah, that you specifically chose for. That. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I'm not going to say we never discontinued a color, but we we keep them all available. Yeah. If you go on our website, you can see all of the colors that are available. And uh, we don't put them out of stock because if we, we can make it. We die to order. Yeah, so we die to order. So our shipping window is two weeks for, um, and we, we are usually faster than that. Yeah. If we get behind, then it can take up to two weeks yeah. to get, a, to get uh, but you're, if, if you, you order all something. get excited about the same color. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Yes, if you get excited about the same color, there might be a little bit of a delay, but we can do everything within two weeks as long as there's no total mayhem or a hurricane or yes. something like that. <laughs> so we don't discontinue any colors. So Betsy has decided that she's going to make every color. I'm trying. Yeah. So <laughs> I have a list at least. Me and my lists. <laughs> yes. So she's actually making colors that people, I guess, haven't ordered in a while, or they just kind of like we forgot about them. Yeah. And um, I'm actually really exciting because excited because some of these colors I hadn't seen for a while. Some of them are really pretty. Yes. Yeah. So I did pull a couple out that okay. you've been working on this week. What have we got. And um, the two that I picked, it's yeah, we definitely have a thing for pink and purple between mm. the two of us. <laughs> 
<laughs> so um, this is uh, lilac, yeah. and it's kind of, I usually take the labels off, but I forgot to, oh, so. You can pull them off. Yeah. This is lilac, so it's kind of a mauvey pink. Yeah, it's just a, a softer pink, like yeah. maybe a touch of gray undertone yes. to it kind of yeah. idea. Yeah. It almost, it's not heathered, but it almost has a heathery feel Look to, to it. it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then the other one is crocus, mm -hmm. which um, you're the pink girl. I'm, I'm not so much on pink, but I am all about purple. Yeah. And this is actually, um, how would you describe it? It's more blue, Again, yeah, purple. Yeah, I would say a blue or gray purple to it. Yes, yeah. whereas um, on the other end of the spectrum you of purples, you would have reddy purples. Yes. This is actually heading more towards blue. the blue. Where my husband came in yesterday evening and it was still in the pot, so it was still all wet. And he looked at it and he said, oh, gray. And I said, no. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I had to pull it out and show him. So by the time you wring the water out and dry it, you get more of the purple. But when it's wet in the pot, it does yeah. have a bit so of So also gray. kind of has like a little bit of a heathery, uh, a he little heathery, not be not because it's heathery. It's just no. that the, the color is just, muted. Yeah. The shade. Yes. It has a bit of the shade. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So these are the, the two um, that you yes, did yesterday, yeah. I think, right? Yeah. And, uh, but we're going to go through all of them. Okay. Yeah, we can hardly wait. All right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we're going to discover. And there were a couple other ones. I'll show a, little, a couple, a few couple pictures. Buoy is uh, variegated. Yeah. Com something, now for something completely, completely different. Completely different. Yeah. <laughs> so um, you'll see a picture of that. Yep. And um, that's what we're doing in the yeah. mail. Yeah. And we're also making some... Uh, uh, felting roving which we don't sell yeah, online no. so unfortunately but we do we do do it we have a kind of like a no waste policy in yes. the in the mill like we use everything yeah. so some of the um the wool that we get that we can't we don't want to put it in the yarn yeah. for some reason maybe it's a little bit short, short or yeah. it could be just the texture yeah. of that particular fleece is not the same right. as what we're looking for for our regular selkirk worsted and other yarns maybe it's not curly enough yeah, yeah. exactly just, yeah. so we um put that aside and then we wash it and then we've made uh rowing for felt some people have spun with our roving, but it is a short, tends yeah, to be okay. a little bit shorter. So unless you're pretty much, uh, we'll give Simone a sim spinner I as well. I don't know anything about spinning. Simone yeah. was actually doing it on the carter today and she said she snuck some pieces off and she was trying it and she gave it an okay go ahead. Okay. Um, although... Okay. We're talking all about it, but you're going to have to come visit us. Yes, that's, that's <laughs> to get right. Your hands on that. Yeah. So if you're coming to the Fiber Festival, yeah. which I'm going to talk about at the end of the podcast. Okay. So if you want to know what's happening with Festival 2023, I have a lot of details to share. All right. So that's what's happening in the mill. Betsy's going through the paces yeah. on the dyeing. Colors, She's doing colors. variegations. She's doing all kinds of things. And we're, we're actually what we're you're doing is quite an in-depth exercise to um, take notes and um, up the consistency of the of the colors because everybody knows that hand dyeing is there's yeah. always going to be some variance. Yeah. But as a mill who reproduces the same colors, yeah. we do want at least for them to right for a name to represent a visual <laughs> yes and what's been happening in the past is if the color comes out i always look at what's on the website if it's similar to the website yeah. i leave it but if it's different i it's, i have kind of a a tolerance for the difference and if it's different then i have to take the picture over again yeah. and i post the picture we the color is the same but uh we, if we're making 83 colors, I don't have time to do that yeah. Not for everyone. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're, that's what we're doing. And is there anything else we should say about what's going? That's really kind no, of the focus. I'm just, I mean, part of why I haven't been knitting a whole lot is I'm on a steep learning curve. So I have to admit, I have been going home a little bit tired, Yeah. but it's good tired yeah. because I love what I'm learning. It's going fairly well. Um, and it's so going, far, it's no going major, really well. No yeah. major mishaps, but no. I'm sure there'll be an adventure someday. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I've actually gone and done some dyeing, but my adventure was that I keep forgetting to check to see how high the water is in the dye vat. So <laughs> I'm using so much water in the dye vat. Yeah, going <laughs> almost right to the top. Usually you need about this much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's lots of... Uh, <laughs> and then I go ahead and put the dye in, and it's not like you can remove the water because if the dye's not there, you're not going to get the right Kim color. has me scrubbing lots. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, good. So wait, because you have to scrub oh, between every color. So yes. I help. Yes. By putting in stuff on the days that Betsy's off or, uh, you know, on the weekends or whatever. Yeah. But, so, anyway, all good. All good. Oh, good. Anyway, we're having fun. Yay. Okay. So there's that. Do you want to put that yeah, on I'll your side? to the pile. Oh, my goodness. This pile's growing. I know. That was what was over here. So I think that that's it. For my part. All yeah. Right. Do we Sounds need to good. talk about anything else? No. No. I no. think we've covered it all. Okay. So you will have to watch the podcast when okay. it's on March 3rd. Because I always watch the okay. podcast, Kim. Not, <laughs> Good. not exactly when it comes out, because I'm working Fridays now, right. but usually by about 7 p.m., and my husband sits down to watch with me. Oh, lovely. Okay, yeah. good. Because I have, all, for the viewers, I've already talked about this, but okay. uh, we're having this unusual winter. Yes. And I was trying, I had to make some room on my phone because I was, my storage space was being all used up. So I went through my pictures and videos and yes. stuff like that. And I actually had video on my phone from 2015, which okay. was the winter that everybody talks about. That I'm looking forward to. So it. I have three short People have already seen it. Three, yeah. sh three short snips of it. How we don't, we're not complaining yes. about this winter okay. ever again. <laughs> 2023 is not going to go down in history it's, like 2015. It's March today, but really for me, it's March tomorrow. Yeah. But yeah. We're already into March. So yeah. It's all good. That's right. Okay. But this was March 15th, the video, by oh, the way. Oh, from the video. Okay. Yes. Nice. So, got it. Things can still happen. Oh, no. Anyway. <laughs> But you might like it. I don't know. Well, no. Okay. I like winter in January and early February. Okay. By March, I'm not so fond of it okay. anymore. So where do you see what was happening on in 2015? <sighs> anyway, that's it. So have a good evening, Betsy. All right. We'll see you okay. later, Kim. Bye. All right. So I think that we have shown quite a few projects and we're loving the fact that Simone has joined us. Um, so Jennifer Hicks was a pretty prolific knitter as well. And I'm really lucky because Simone is also very prolific. So that takes the pressure off of me and now off of Betsy too, because she's, uh, you know, favoring her arm to make sure that she doesn't uh, get to a point where she can't knit or crochet or anything at, at all. So um, we have another person in there pinch hitting for us <laughs> coming up with uh, projects and Simone is a lightning fast knitter so uh, it's really uh, incredible to to see when we do this little knit night uh, every second week every second Tuesday uh, we've been going to um, one of our good customers Joanne is in, has uh, invited people to come and knit at her place and you sometimes just have to stop and watch Simone going and she doesn't look at what she's knitting either so she knits like that super fast and is not even watching her knitting it's amazing anyway so that's that so uh, we are going to talk a little bit about Rowan right now because the Rowan spring um, has launched and I want to talk about the Rowan magazine number 73 and I'm going to do a little slideshow as I do uh, usually with that magazine and I am going to talk about another book that they launched as well which is crochet so first of all Rowan number 73 uh, this magazine is, uh, it says right here, Knitting and Crochet, but I went through R magazine, M magazine 73 and there's no crochet in it this time, but they had so many crochet patterns that they actually did like a separate book. So if you're just an avid crocheter, um, the magazine doesn't have any crochet in it this time. One of the only times that, that I've seen that it doesn't have anything, but there is another book. And I'm gonna show both the, both books today in the podcast because uh, we don't wanna forget about our friends at Crochet. So the, the magazine, by the way, um, I haven't counted all of the patterns in all the other magazines, but um, the magazine has 40 patterns in it. So it's actually a really good, um, uh, they sell for $45, but when you do average that out by the number of patterns that in is in it, it's pretty amazing. So it's $45 and you have lots of information and row and patterns. So this magazine in particular 
is really great because there's actually there's plenty of patterns for women but there's also a really good selection of patterns for men so usually there are some patterns for men but in this uh, particular uh, issue there's quite a few patterns for men and they've also incorporated patterns for children by Martin Story in the same magazine as well so they've they've gone over a, a, a big spe spectrum of different types of patterns um, obviously folks focusing on some of the lighter yarns like the cottons so Rowan carries quite a few cotton yarns um, people that have watched uh, the podcast for a long time remember that I have knit uh, the Cornwallis sweater out of Summer Light DK that's one of their um, cotton yarns they also have a finer one called Summer Light uh, Summer Light <laughs> four ply and um, they have cotton cashmere and we have cotton wool um, they also have a, a yarn called summer or sorry soft yak dk and uh, martin story likes to knit with that one for men in, in particular and there's lace and there's all, all kinds of different yarns that are suitable for warmer weather and this magazine has a good variety uh, utilizing all of those uh, all of those yarns this time so I am going to show a slideshow. I'm going to show a slideshow of the main body of some, not, not all 40 patterns, but uh, some of the main patterns that I liked from this. But I will also show at the end the patterns for children because it's a little bit unusual that they have patterns for children in the main magazine.
All right, so that's just a kind of a, a quick look at what's happening with Rowan uh, for spring and summer 2023. Now for the crochet part, we do have a, a full book called Summertime Crochet. And these, uh, this book has 10 patterns in it. And um, I'm going to do a slideshow for this as well. So we're gonna take a look at that right away. Okay, so lots of different things there as well. So there's tunics and, um, you know, typical kind of lacy looking things that uh, we associate with crochet, but also some great uh, t-shirts and things like that. So those two books uh, are uh, really great. I ordered a lot more books. So if you're interested in new pattern books, there's, I think I have like six other new books that I ordered from Rowan and you can go on the, um, on the website and check them out because there's a lot of different ones. I've been really loving the Rowan four project books and those are tend to be the little capsule wardrobes. So I've ordered a lot more of those books because it's a good variety for a really reasonable price. They range between six fifty and eight dollars usually so those little booklets are really great and of course there is a rowan uh, mode at rowan collection eight i've been loving these Ro mode uh, at rowan books as well so i will show that on the next podcast um, but uh, we do have them in stock uh, right now so i hope you'll be, be uh, enjoy those uh, books and take a look at some of those patterns because they're really really lovely also in the shop, I wanted to show it now. I'm gonna warn you that a couple of the things that I'm gonna show, I don't have a lot of quantities. So if you, if you want it, then you'll be forgiven if you stop the podcast right now and go, <laughs> go and get it. So the first thing is we have one of our blankets left. So it's this one right here. And this is the light green tweed and it's a throw. So it's not the queen size blanket, it's a throw, but we have one left. There was a miscount on the order that we, uh, we had. So when I listed them on the, um, on the website and we shipped them all out, we had one blanket left and this is it. So if you think that you missed out on the blankets and you really want one of the throws, I have this one left. So you can, you can buy that on, online. So that's that. Also, uh, we have our um, order of thrum mittens. So the people that subscribe to the newsletter have already known about the thrum mittens. Um, for people that don't know, we do do a newsletter. It goes out at 2.30 Atlantic time on every Friday, right before the podcast is uh, published as well on Friday. And the newsletter people sometimes have links to products before I feature it on the podcast. And if I have products that are left when I come to do record the podcast, then I offer it to all of the viewers. 
So we did get more th thrum mittens in. So Joe, who's uh, our local knitter for thrum mittens, has brought us uh, some more thrum mittens. I have a couple pairs left from the last order that she has, but she does have more yarn to knit more mittens for me. So what I'm going to do is um, the ones that I have in stock are available. So if you want to order them, you can order them. When they sell out, I will do like a pre-order for the uh, mittens that she is, she's knitting now. So you might, um, I'll try to indicate that it's now a pre-order when you go in there because I'm not sure how long the mittens that I have left will, will last. But if, um, if you see pre-order on the thrum mittens, then you'll know that I'm waiting for her to bring them in. So I can't tell you exactly when they're, they're going to ship, but you will reserve a pair when, when they come. Somebody wrote to me um, this week about sizing for the thrum mittens. So Joe makes the mittens all the same size. So this is what they look like. They're, they seem to be like they're, they're pretty big, but if somebody's not familiar, then with the inside of them, these are the thrums. So the wool that's inside actually takes up all of the space that's in, in there. And the question from the customer was, what size and um, this particular customer's daughter has a smaller hand, um, would they be suitable? So I can't, they're all one size, but what I think happens, because I, this happened with mine, is that you, you, it's really hard to put your hand inside them actually. You have to kind of sort it, your hand out around all of those uh, thrums that are inside. And the way that the thrum mittens work is as, as you wear them, your hand actually felt the wool inside. So my theory is that if your hand is smaller, you're just not going to mat down the thrums as much and that they'll fill in the spaces to accommodate a slightly smaller hand. Now, they're not gonna fit a child, they're adult size, but um, by the same token, if your hand is bigger, there's lots of room in there, but you're going to be matting down the, the thrums a bit more. So I have, um, I think my hand is like, I take a seven and a half glove, which is pretty kind of mid range. And they feel quite snug because none of the felt or the wool inside has been felt yet in these ones. Um, so I can definitely feel that a smaller hand would still be able to wear them. And, but when these mittens actually, when you just look at them like this, they look huge, but they don't feel huge at all. So we do have some of those. We also have a few of um, the wool socks left as well. So these socks are made by hand by Janet who works here. She uses a knitting machine and to, to knit the socks and then she hand finishes the, the, um, the seaming on the rib and she hand finishes the, the toes. And they're knit out of our natural wool, natural black. So this is wool from our sheep our black sheep and it's kind of like a dark chocolate brown I've talked about this before and we have a few pairs of these uh, these left as well if you want to uh, purchase some really nice wool socks they're not uh, they're not um, super thick but they're not for inside fancy shoes they are more for boots and things like that so uh, so just to give you an idea of it's hard to tell what the thickness is but they are um, really really lovely 100% wool socks and we have a uh, restock on some things from Coco Knits. So we were out of forever the ruler gauge. So this is a ruler and a gauge, um, a needle gauge as well. So that's back in stock. Um, I should probably just open it and show it to you. It's two, because it's uh, two pieces. And as always with Coco Knits product, products, they both have um, magnets on them so it can it will stick to either the maker's board you can they'll stick on the maker's board you can use them as a um, to keep your place on the maker's board I'm showing a picture of the maker's board right here and they both have magnets on them and uh, we got those back in stock so if you're interested in that we have that and we also restocked the fuzz off comb so the fuzz off comb I've showed this a few times on the podcast so it's nothing new but we were just out of stock so you have this uh this comb to uh that you use to remove any of your pills and that's just the way that you use it 
and um, you use you can use it in conjunction with the fabric brush as well. Um, I only have one of the brushes left and uh, I don't have any coming in right now because I'm, I'm just out of stock so I will be ordering them. But the way you use them together is that you um, kind of move up lift up the pills with the fab the fabric brush and then you use the fuzz off comb to remove them and that is makes it a little bit more efficient you can also use that brush to um, clean your knits uh, if you just have like a little bit of dust or dirt on them that 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 natural bristle brush will help to um, to take that out or if you're knitting with uh, um, the mohair and other other yarns that have some fluff to them um, you can kind of revive them with the uh, the clothing brush as well and um, just like I said I ha have one of those in stock right now but I will be ordering more if that's something that interests you so that's it for the shop update and uh, like I said lots of uh, other books that I haven't talked about um, from Rowan this time and uh, as you know from the in the mill section that we did with in Betsy's section we are like really stocking up every color of yarn that we have and it might be fun if you haven't looked at our full selection of yarns to just take a little look at all the different colors that we have I, it was really kind of amazing when uh, when it was actually counted up and we have 83 different colorways so that's that's uh, that's good that's a lot of a lot, lot of colors I'm going to talk about the Fiber Festival now. I actually missed uh, talking about it in the last episode. So if you're wondering if it's happening, yes, for sure it is happening. The dates are October 5th to the 7th and um, it will be held at the P Prince Edward Island Convention Center, which is in the Delta Hotel here on the harbor front in Charlottetown. And we are coming to the close of the uh, call for vendors. So if you know somebody that would like to be part of the Fiber Festival as a vendor, then certainly they can apply. So the, there is um, still lots of time to apply if you're a vendor. We are just closed the, um, we had a closing date. It doesn't mean that you can't apply. It just means that we start evaluating the applications that we have and to confirming to people if their application has been accepted or, or not. So we still, if the Fiber Festival, all the spots are, are um, not filled after we do this review, then you will still be able to apply if you're sitting on the fence or you're not sure if you want to uh, vend at the Fiber Festival, you will still have um, time to submit uh, right up until quite close to the Fiber Festival actually happens, um, as long as we have spaces. But we will start uh, telling within the next uh, two weeks or so, we'll start telling people if they've been successful with their application or not. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is for the Fiber Festival is that we actually are expanding the number of workshops that we're going to be offering this year. So just to confirm, uh, Patty Lyons will be coming. So uh, Patty was on the slate for 2022, so she will be uh, coming for sure on, in 2023. We also have Kristen Drysdale, which will come as well. They had lo lots of classes in the 2022 festival that was canceled because of Fiona. And um, so they are offering their classes again and they fill up fairly quickly. Um, so we're not ready to announce yet when the classes, the tickets will go on sale, but it, last year it was sometime around mid-April. So I would suspect it'll be sometime close to that same time. And, uh, but we'll start making an announcements of instructors. So we have more workshops this time planned than what we had last year. So that should be exciting. And we've tried to, um, really be careful about having a wide variety of things. So we have a little bit more crochet, um, I think, when we've everything's said and done. Um, we also were looking at specific techniques in knitting and cro crochet and looking to see if we could find instructors for different, a more, a wider variety of techniques and so forth. So the, the committee is actually working quite hard on that right now. So um, I hope you're going to be able to, uh, to join us for the Fiber Festival. Um, one of the things we got feedback about for 2022 is that uh, 
the rooms, the hotel rooms with a preferential rate were booked up fairly quickly. So that made people that were trying to plan a trip here, it made that the, um, the cost of accommodations could have been a, is a little bit higher. Um, plus the date in September that we had last year was actually still in the high season here. So we've moved that date to the first week of October and that means that there, is, um, there are better rates for hotels and accommodations. There's a newsletter for the PEI Fiber Festival. So if you haven't already signed up for the newsletter, you might want to do that because we will be making announcements through the newsletter fairly regularly. The website for the PEI Fiber Festival is um, being worked on all the time. So we have all of the hotel partners there. They have links to uh, for you to book space in your rooms with the preferential rates that the Fiber Festival has negotiated with the um, with the hotels. So you can do that. You also have a link to the Prince Edward Island Fiber Trail. You have links to tourism Prince Edward Island as well. So they, they, with tons of information about visiting Prince Edward Island. And the other thing that I just realized and I didn't know before was that uh, Celtic Colors in Nova Scotia, which is a festival that happens in Cape Breton around the Gaelic College, but it has lots of entertainment and things, is actually starting on the 6th of October and runs for a week. So if you're planning a trip east to the Maritimes, then it's really a perfect opportunity to uh, visit Prince Edward Island and Cape Breton at the same time. And you're going to get like really the best of the best of the festivals. So Celtic Colors is a really uh, well-known festival with lots of entertainment and culinary and culture. And that runs after, uh, it starts kind of on one of the days of the PEI Fiber Festival, but it runs for a week after that. So if you come to PEI and then you go to Celtic Colors, you really have a, a fantastic holiday planned, I can tell you. The ferries are still running in PEI during that time. And the ferry uh, docks in Pictou County in Nova Scotia, which means that the drive to Cape Breton, I think it's a, just an hour and a half. So after you get off of the boat, it's an hour and a half and you're, you're right at the right in Cape Breton. So that's uh, really a fantastic time to come and visit. Fall for me in the Maritimes is actually uh, a, my favorite time of year. So I hope you're going to be able to join us at the PEI Fiber Festival in 2023, October 5th to the 7th, and we will keep you posted. Um, I'm part of the voluntary board of, uh, on the organizing board. So uh, I will keep you posted uh, in this podcast about what's happening with the Fiber Festival as we go. Now we're going to go to the harmony section. And as I said in the introduction, we just have beautiful, calm winter fields with some beautiful music behind it. And I hope you enjoy the harmony part. And I hope you have a relaxing two weeks. And we will see you in two weeks time. And may you find joy in your crafting, whatever it is that you do. And enjoy these few minutes of peace and harmony in the harmony part. Bye, and we'll see you in two weeks time. Bye.